Hey guys, this is Mosquito, also known as Chris, with themodzoo.com, and today we're going to take a look at the AI7 that Ann Ideas has sent us for review. <laughs> Alright, so this is the Ann Ideas AI7 Black with a Window. This is an ATX case, and it has room for one five and a quarter inch drive, four three and a half inch drives, one two and a half inch drives, but you can also use the three and a half inch trays, room for up to two 140 millimeter fans or two 120 millimeter fans in the top or a radiator. It comes with four LED fans in the front. Those are 120 millimeters. You can also install a 220 or a pair of 140s in the front, as well as a pair of 240 millimeter radiators and it also comes with seven expansion slots. You can fit an ATX power supply, graphics cards up to 348 millimeters, CPU coolers up to 174 millimeters, and it also comes in black or white with or without a window and optionally with white LED fans instead. It also comes in a micro ATX version, which instead of having the vertical motherboard has a horizontal motherboard. So that's kind of the difference between that. Otherwise, the micro ATX version is the same skews as the uh, ATX version. It's just the AI7M. And that also comes in black and white and with or without windows. So now that that's out of the way, well, let's take a look here at the front. First thing you'll notice is you've got four USB ports on the front. You've got a pair of USB 2.0 and a pair of USB 3.0 ports along with your headphone and microphone jacks. You have a power and a reset and you also have your power and hard drive LED lights. So kind of your standard, I guess, front IO ports. You also have room for one five and a quarter inch bay, uh, just one and that will sacrifice one of your three and a quarter inch drives if you want to put in an actual optical disk drive but there should be enough room depending on a fan controller length to get a fan controller in here if you want one without necessarily having to lose that uh, three and a half inch drive so popping off the front of this thing is actually pretty easy it's it's not hard at all um, it's kind of nice that it just sort of comes off without having to, you know, rip the thing off. And it's also nice that it's not attached. So all of your front IO and your power buttons, even though you can get to them from the front panel, are all connected to the case itself and not the front panel. So that's kind of nice. On the inside of this, we can see that behind this front mesh is a plastic honeycomb pattern. And there are two standoffs here that kind of keep it away from the case so you don't have to worry about accidentally pushing on this and denting your front mesh. So that's kind of nice, um, but at the same time that also means you're not going to be able to mount your fans on the outside of the case because of those. And another thing too is if you did want to get fans, you're going to have to get slim fans because standard fans are a little bit taller than what these posts are so that's not going to really work because you'd be right up against the front and if you're right up against the front with the fans then you're going to get a lot of noise from your fans so that's something to keep in mind if you happen to think that you want to do water cooling or something where you put your fans on the outside and your radiators on the inside you're going to have to get slim fans because they're not going to fit otherwise something else that they've included here is a mesh filter and although it's large and although it does cover most of the front there are a lot of holes in it because they left you room to access all of your fan screws which although not a bad idea i'd rather have a fan filter that actually covers everything instead of most of everything so it is kind of a little bit difficult to get in and out of the case it's just a plastic mesh um, and there's about 10 different things you have to slot this onto, including two in the middle. And the best way that I found was to get those two in the middle first and then kind of start working your way around. See, this I think would be a lot more useful if it were like, you know, magnetic instead of something like this where you have to try and 
get all these different tabs to hold on to it and catch and make sure that while you're getting all the other tabs in you're not accidentally popping other ones out because that's something that I frequently have problems with on this one. There we go. I know it's not that big of a deal but the other thing is that when you go to clean your filters you're gonna have to deal with that. So it'd be nice if it was just a magnetic filter and they're already using one somewhere else so it's not like they don't have the materials already. All right, so coming around to the hardware side, the motherboard side, you have a nice big window and that's an option. You could also get a standard side panel that doesn't have a window. And if you don't want this window or you want to maybe do a custom window, like you want a smoked acrylic or a tinted acrylic, you know, a transparent red, blue, green, whatever, um, I would probably go with the other side panel because this is one of those side panels that's formed so it's pretty much cast to be exactly what you need and then it's mounted in with these little tabs here that you can bend out if you want so if you really wanted to you know you could probably mill your own window replacement but if you want something other than this factory window you better off just going with you know the non-window version and cut out your own and the other thing of note here is that they do put their name on the side panel. Some people care, some people don't. I don't really care for it, but hey, it's there. It's their case, it's their name. They have a right to put their name on it. And then on the other side, we have a plain panel. This one comes with some mesh here for your power supply intake. And like I was talking about earlier, this actually comes with a magnetic filter, nice and easy. Now, moving on to the top of the case, we have this little latch that unless you have really tiny fingers or a screwdriver or something is kind of a pain. So it's got this little latch thing here. And what you gotta do is get your finger, screwdriver, pencil, whatever you want, and push that in and then this flips up and that lets you take this panel out and I mean, it's nice that you don't have to take any screws out or anything like that, but it's still kind of annoying to get to. So this is the top panel intake, and this is the mesh as well as filter, and this is not a removable filter. And it has the same plastic mesh as the front panel and that side intake for the power supply, except this is sandwiched between this plastic frame and the metal mesh. So the only way to get to that would be to unfold all these tabs across the top, bottom, both sides, and then pop out that metal mesh, and then you can get to the plastic mesh. You have room for an additional two 140 millimeter or 220 millimeter fans. And these brackets here are movable, although not a whole lot because of where the screw holes are. Um, that does give you the option to move them back and forth if you wanted to have a radiator in here. You can change where you have your inlets if you want to have them on you know, the front or the back. It's pretty easy to change all that. So taking a look at the back of the chassis, we can see, like I said, it has room for an ATX motherboard. So there's seven expansion slots. There's also these two thumb screws that have the little mechanism to hold your PCI Express slot items in place. There are screws for each one of those, so at least you do have the option once you have that bracket in place to screw down your PCI devices. So seven expansion slots, room for mounting a 120 millimeter fan, room for mounting a 90 millimeter, 92 millimeter fan, and of course your ATX power supply, which you can mount with the fan either facing the side panel or the motherboard. I don't know why you would make it face the motherboard because there's no intake that way, but hey, options are options, right? Pass through knockouts in case you want to water cool with an external radiator. Do people do that still? I mean, I guess if you do, let us know, but I don't know of too many people that still do that. So two knockouts for pass throughs. You'll probably have to find your own grommets because I don't know that I'd want to have just straight tubing against metal, especially if these two tabs on either side of those knockouts don't come out very cleanly, but you know, whatever. 
shouldn't be too hard to find. And then the last thing is there is a fan speed control switch here. So there's a, an H, an S, and an L. So that will control fans in your system up to four, I think, four or five fans can be connected to that fan controller. Um, so I think the last thing to show you is the bottom of the case. We can see that there's no areas for ventilation for your power supply, but it doesn't really matter because, like I said, your power supply is going to be intake from the side. The other thing is that you get a fan filter for an optional 120 millimeter mounted fan in the bottom and a nice filter for that. It's a plastic frame with the fine mesh and that just kind of slides right into place. So that's kind of nice that it comes out the side and not the back so you don't have to try and pull your case out from the wall in order to get to it. So that's pretty much it. These four feet are screwed in from the bottom so if you wanted to pop those off and replace them with other feet, nicer feet, taller feet, bigger feet, smaller feet, colorful feet, no feet. Uh, you might want some feet because you got, you know, that and you got some screws and stuff hanging out on the bottom that probably wouldn't do good things to your desk surface. But hey, whatever works for you, you can take the feet out if you want, pretty easy. So that's always nice. So let's take a look at the inside of this guy. All right, so taking a look at the main chamber, the side where you'll be mounting your hardware for your motherboard, your graphics cards, and probably anything else you want to throw in here. Um, we can see that there's only two grommets for routing your cables. Uh, it'd be nice if there were another set, say like down here on the bottom, just in case you wanted to use a micro ATX motherboard, because that would give you a little bit more room to work with. Um, one thing that I'm kind of concerned about is if you mount a full ATX board, all your cables are going to have to be routed along here, such as your USB audio front cables for power and reset. So it'd be kind of nice if they had a cutout. Here. There is a cutout for the CPU backplates here. Um, it's not that big, so if you have a certain layout to your motherboard that might be difficult, say if the processor isn't exactly up in that spot. Basically, if you want to get to that backplate on your motherboard, you're going to have to take out that drive cage in order to get that. So something to keep in mind. Again, not very hard, but still kind of annoying if you don't have to. And then up here at the top, we have two drive cages for three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. And these are toolless and they are okay. I mean, they are just plastic. It's probably the easiest way to make a toolless drive cage or drive bay. And they do actually lock in place fairly well, so they're not that bad, but they definitely have their issues when you try and put them in empty. They don't always like to stay in the tracks very well. But this also gives you the option to mount two and a half inch drives if you want. You can use four of these holes in the bottom here, one, two, three, four, depending on which side you want the wires on. So if you have the bays this way and you for some reason want the wires coming out this end, you would use these four. And if you wanted it coming out this other side, you would use the other four. So you get two of those, which are removable. You take out these two rails. There's two screws on both sides. Once you get those removed, then you can just kind of pop that little rail out and you can do that for all four of them. Four pre-installed 120 millimeter fans on the front and then you get another one on the back that does not light up. And that's all the fans that you get in this one which actually isn't bad. I mean there's a lot of places to mount fans and you fill over half of them. So that's kind of nice actually. So moving on to this side of the case we can see that here is the drive cage for those two and a half or three and a half inch drives. And you can slide these out. There's not a lot of room this way. So what they've implemented, and this is actually kind of a good design I like about this, is that there's one thumb screw on this end. So one thumb screw comes out 
And then these brackets that it's screwed into here, so there's two brackets on the top here, or two screws in one bracket up there, two screws in a bracket down here. Now your drive cable can swing out. Enough to have easy access to both of those drives. So that's actually kind of nice that you don't have to remove the whole thing or mess around with trying to, you know, get these out of here and everything, especially if you have a radiator, that's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. So then you can also mount a two and a half inch drive here. So there's two little pegs here that go in the screw holes and then that just leans up against here and then you put two screws in the top and that is your two and a half inch drive slot. Dang it. The next thing here is they've actually included a fan splitter, which is kind of nice. And there is room for up to five fans. So you have one, two, three, four, five. This one is actually your power in, and that comes from a different connector, which is powered by Molex. It'd be nice if this was SATA instead of Molex, but hey, works. Um, so you can see here that this is the wire coming in. This is power in. It goes up here, across the top here, and then back to this little switch. So this is where you would control that if you wanted to adjust the speed of your fans. All right, so let's start getting into some of the fun stuff. Let's get some hardware in this thing. So first, they say it'll fit a 240 in the top. Yep. <laughs> Even with your fans, there's barely enough room in there, but there is room for a slim radiator. And one thing that is kind of a bummer, honestly, is that you can't remove this kind of drive cage area that's in here. So you can't get rid of that unless you start hacking it apart yourself, which obviously this is the mod zoo. That's what we do. I mean, let's go. But to say that it fits a radiator, yeah, it's true. It doesn't quite fit it in ideal circumstances, but it does definitely fit in there and it does obviously work. You still have access to your fill port or to your uh, inlet and outlets, but do keep in mind that you are gonna have to make sure that these are close enough together that they don't interfere with this cage because that would obviously require a little bit more modding. We will start to see why, although yes, there is room for two different 240 millimeter radiators in the front, there are some problems with that. Once you have that installed on this side, and these are actually pretty narrow this way. I mean, they're not smaller than the fan, but they aren't much wider. So these are pretty narrow, which is why I like them. And the problem is this second radiator now is hitting the first one and it doesn't line up with the holes. So, although technically, yes, you can get two 240 millimeter radiators in the front, you are going to have to make sure you get the skinniest possible radiators. So they have to be pretty much only 120 millimeters wide. Maybe 122 might work. I don't know how many out there are that much narrower than these. I think Magicool might be, uh, some EK might be, I think dark side ones might be, maybe a couple of others, but I mean, these are pretty common thickness. You know, these aren't that wide. They're not hardware labs, all right? So the fact that they don't work in here is kind of annoying because that's a pretty common radiator width. Now, most AIOs are gonna fit just fine. So if, if for some reason you wanted to run a pair of 240 millimeter AIOs, that will work in the front. So yes, technically you can get two 240 millimeter radiators in the front, but no, not really. I mean, sort of, but not really. Nice try. 
that said, I think it'd be kind of fun if you had one of those 480 millimeter radiators where it was a pair of 240s basically welded together. I mean, soldered together technically, I guess, because it's copper, but hey, if you got one of those radiators, that would fit on the front and that actually be kind of cool because you have just one big radiator in the front. And you could also mount a single 280 millimeter radiator in the middle and you could also mount a 180 millimeter or 200 millimeter radiator because there are mounting holes here for 180 and 200 millimeter fans. So that's another option, that's kind of cool. Uh, the thing to keep in mind though, is that you already start running out of space when you put a radiator on the inside here. So you're gonna have to have the right sized graphics cards in order to make that work. And if you go for a thicker radiator, you're gonna have to get smaller graphics cards. So as you can see with the motherboard installed, there's not much room. Uh, down here on the bottom, this is what I was talking about. You have your front IO, you know, your USB 3.0 might be down here, your USB 2.0 might be down here, your front audio is probably gonna be down here, your front lights, power switch, everything is probably gonna be down along the bottom. So something to keep in mind when you're routing cables is that's gonna be a little bit tight, especially if you have graphics cards in there if you go with a lot of graphics cards. But other than that, everything fits fairly easily. There's quite a bit of space for running your cables up through the top if you want, but something I can already see is if you need to get your 24 pin or your CPU power up here, that might cause problems with your radiator, but we can probably work around that. So not that big of a deal. So now we've got a graphics card installed in here and you have a fair bit of room. I mean, from the, all the way in the back of the case up to where I have a radiator, you have about 11 and a half inches if you're going to install a slim radiator like this. Otherwise you have probably 12 and a half inches before you hit the fan. So that's a pretty good amount of space, even with these big graphics cards. Okay, so, an ideas. An idea to do would be make these longer. Look at this. So, I mean, if you have a longer graphics card than that, and your audio is all the way down in that corner, you're not gonna be able to make that work. I mean, this is barely long enough for what I'm doing here, and this isn't even that crazy of a setup. So, your audio might be a problem. The USB is okay, these front Connectors here are actually okay. They're pretty, I mean, this one's all right for the reset and hard drive, but the power and power LED are a little bit tight. So it really doesn't leave you any ability to manage these cables at all. So it'd be really nice to see these cables extended so that you could actually route them around the end of the motherboard so you don't have to just fish them right through the middle of the case. Kind of a bummer. That barely fits there. And if you wanna put a radiator in the front, you're pretty much gonna immediately have to put an angle on it. And I'm not even sure, nope, this fitting here won't fit, so I'm gonna have to find another one. I also tried an XSPC fitting. It was too wide, so I'm gonna have to try and find something narrow but short. So that's something to keep in mind if you're gonna water cool this case. You might wanna mod some stuff and trying to flip this around isn't really gonna work either because then the port is gonna be way over there. So I think what they should have done is made it so you can hold four 120 millimeter fans up here so that way you could have one of them right through here which would make things a lot easier if you wanted to water cool. I know that might kind of screw up some stuff with these drive cages, but I don't know that that would be that difficult to get around. So I think that would be really nice if they wanted to actually call this a water cooling case. For the power supply, before you run into the fan hub, you are limited to about nine and a quarter inches if you want to go all the way, but probably only about eight and a half, nine inches at most if you 
I'll have a modular power supply so you have enough room to get those connectors in place. So, I just completed the build in this system and it went okay. It was a little bit frustrating. The short front I.O. cables were kind of a pain, kind of a downer because it meant that I had to run the cables just straight through instead of being able to actually, you know, ride them around something and get some sort of cable management so they weren't just hanging out right in the middle there, just kind of screwing everything up. Um, I almost thought about actually just unplugging all of them for this, but I figured I'd be true to form and at least have them plugged in so that way you could see them. But I did end up going with a smaller graphics card. So it's a short graphics card instead of the long graphics card that I had in there, just so I could have a little bit easier time routing some of the tubing. Um, the back of the motherboard tray obviously provides plenty of space for routing your cables. But one thing to note is that some of the areas for tying off those cables are kind of hidden by that drive cage. So that's kind of something to keep in mind that if you want to tie down all of your cables on the back, which I like to because I don't really like having cables just sort of floating around, but obviously you have quite a bit of space this way. So I didn't have any problems tucking away all the cables that I needed to. So that's, that's definitely good. And I do like the dual chamber design. It is nice to have your power supply and drives on one side and then all of your prettier hardware, <laughs> your motherboard and graphics cards and stuff on this side. So that's kind of nice. I think something that would actually be really cool is if they got rid of the PCI bracket here and then just put in a vertical GPU slot here. Just something to show off your hardware, but I guess I've never really been a fan of these PCI Express easy hold downs. I don't know what they call them, but this bracket here that holds your PCI devices if you don't want to put screws in. Quick Things I liked. You do get five fans pre-installed with this case. As long as you're okay with the blue, you're good to go. The fan hub with the controller here is kind of nice because you can control all five of those fans, although the back fan couldn't quite reach it without an extension, but you can control five fans on that controller out of the box, which is a nice thing. Um, it definitely had space for all the hardware I needed, though I did run into some difficulty because I was water cooling. Things I didn't like, those I.O. cables are way too short. I didn't like the front filter, and I wish that this latch was a little bit bigger, or at least easier to use, because it's not the greatest. And then I also really wish that this top tray where your drive trays go would be removable as well, without having to drill out all the rivets and stuff, and then I'm afraid that you'd start to get a really wobbly case. Um, keeping in mind the price, it's really not that bad. So, modability. I think there's a pretty good amount of modability to this case. I mean, something that I would really consider doing is totally getting rid of most of this top panel and making it so I can have two radiators up in the top or at least one radiator off to the side and a set of fans on the other side or something. I think that'd be kind of cool. I would probably either throw a 480, which is the 2x2 two two radiator in the front, or I would probably, more likely, because it kind of looks a little bit cooler to have two radiators, but space out the fans a little bit more by drilling new holes and mounting two radiators up front, and then I'd probably go with the non-windowed side panel and make my own window, because I'm never really a fan of these cast side windows. Um, the feet would be really easy to change, and there's plenty of space for a decent water cooling system. I think if you can get all the radiators figured out and all that good stuff. So I think modability, it's pretty good. All right, so final thoughts. Hmm, I really thought I was gonna like this case. I really thought it was gonna be better at water cooling than it was, um, however, it does okay as long as you have the right parts. So I think it does sufficiently well in water cooling and it does really well in air cooling that it's not that bad. And especially considering the price, which at the time of review was $99.99 for this version with the window 
or $89.99 for the version without the window, which is probably what I'd go with. So I think keeping all of that in mind, it's a pretty solid four nanners. And I think, I think for air cooling, I would say Modzu approved, but for water cooling, eh, I think the jury's still out on that one. So let us know what you think about the AI7 from N Ideas in the comments below or in our forums at www.themodzoo.com or over on our Facebook page, Facebook slash themodzoo, or Twitter, which is at themodzoo. So get on one of your favorite social media platforms and let us know what you think of this case. Would you buy one? Would you water cool it? What would you do with it if you had one? So once again, this is Mosquito, also known as Chris, with themodzoo.com, and this was a review of the AI7 from Ideas. so thanks for watching.